Right, uh, Stevie Ryder is on front, King Leo de Grands. Yeah, he was lead horse, and uh, we've Wayne Lord and great to see him back. Uh, in the brilliant saddle. to see Wayne yeah. back as well, exactly. Uh, since uh, he got that fall in the Irish Derby, complete freak fall, but uh, hopefully it's not too long away now before we'll see Wayne Lord in, in the next couple of weeks, please. Go exactly, back on the race course. exactly, and he was in great form there, Wayne. Great to see him back on track today, and it's been a long time off, and it's nice to see him just back here, and hopefully it won't be too long back before we see him with a proper set of colours on him and take part. Gus Rodan is going to follow Wayne Lord and Wayne is riding Navy Seal wasn't it back in third position and Henry Adams I believe is sitting in second position. Henry Adams of course the man to Dean Gallagher an integral part of the Ballydial team of course since he retired from riding. Brilliant rider mm. in his day champion hurdle winning jockey in hurdle why as well. Mm, he was indeed yeah wide margin winner James Fanshawe trained him didn't he hurdle -well. He did, didn't he? Yes. Yeah, nearly starting for Paul, Paul Green. Green yes. yeah, yeah, Paul Green, James Fanshaw. Couldn't be better. He won a Hennessy and couldn't be better for Charlie yeah. Brooks as well, didn't he? Second in the Gold Cup in Dubasilla as well. Dubasilla, yes. Yeah, 100% yeah. right. And, uh, yeah, just the feature, I suppose, of feature, I suppose, of Bally Doyle. Uh, they have a lot of top X riders down there in the mornings as well. Adrian as Maguire. The, yeah, as well as the afternoons. And uh, we get Brett around Dyle, to another one. Brett Doyle is down there, yes. And uh, riding Augusta Rodan, a very good rider in Rachel Rachel Richardson. Rachel Richardson, Rich, Richardson who was based up... Uh, Tim in North England for Tim Eastbury and has been in Ballydoyle for the last couple of years. She's tracking Wayne Lauren here at this point in time. And uh, the couple of three year olds are sitting behind King Leo de Grange this, at this stage of the work. And uh, I suppose to get him away, get him on a, a sound surface, take him out of Ballydoyle and just get a nice sharp bit of work over a shortish trip. You know, they probably worked uh, from the seven home and uh, it was probably. A decent bit of work, I'd say. You know, it looked like he t it took a blow going by us and uh, made it stretch by his other rivals. So look, it looked a promising start to the year, what we could see at least. Yeah, he looked extremely well when we saw him afterwards as well. And uh, in the parade ring. And what, is it's roughly around six weeks away to Dubai now, isn't it? Uh, yeah, exactly. Like uh, we're talking about four weeks to Gold Cup Day at Chelham. Five, just over five, I think it's the week after. Or 30th of March or 28th of March. So, yeah, it's five, six weeks. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, it's an interesting dynamic. We've seen Equinox win the race to this horse to go for last year. And it can be a very, very strong race, the mile and a half race on Dubai World Cup night. You're guaranteed to get fast ground. He loved me, Danny. He, he's a strong traveller. And uh, look, he's uh, been come there full of running under Rachel Richardson. He's got his head in front. Wayne Lauren, the eventual second, getting a good workout in him. And he's kept on alongside the older horse on the other side with white face. But you get the impression that Augusta Roland is just doing enough. And he may well be taking a blow at this point. Uh, just once he's got inside the final half, far nudged out, he's kept on. And here's prick near the line. Just does enough and he gets you there, see the, he? See how fluent a mover he is, though. Yes. Like he's got that daisy cutter action, he barely bends his knee. I know he won the race post trophy as a two year old on quite testing ground, but the form of that race probably is only okay. And he did bomb out, of course, on testing ground last year on two occasions. But when he gets the sound surface, he's very, very good and be really interested to see how he shapes up this year. I know he's had, a, he's had an unbelievable amount of training. Uh, brilliance along the way, Ed and O'Brien. But I thought this, what he's done with this horse to get him back, obviously from the Guineas to win at Epsom. Mm. He was very workmanlike, as we saw in the Irish Derby, to come back and beat Luxembourg then in the Champion Stakes and to finish off the year with his fifth group one in brilliant style in America. Yeah, and he's a horse I think you know by in the parade ring. I was looking up to him in Epsom and he looked stripped and ready to go. He didn't look quite as good in the Irish Derby mm. pre race. He looked, you could see the run in Epsom in him, in him and uh, of course he upheld form with King of Steel in the Irish Champion Stakes after uh, bombing out of King. George tactics in King George they went off very hard for what they were and the grounds he could really catch him on that occasion but each time he's got fast ground at a mile and a half yeah. he's won and a mile and a quarter of course the Irish champion stakes and uh, it's a really interesting dynamic because he's by uh, obviously deep impact mm -hmm. and there's a huge a trend with deep impacts in Japan getting better at age. They normally just improve from okay. three to four, four to five, uh, whatever they do. Now, he was pretty well made three-year-old last year mm -hmm. as well, but uh, on breeding, he should improve this year. 